All right, hello everyone, this is John, and today I just wanna show you a quick and easy method to calculating the mean and sum for a list of variables with missing data. So um, in this mock data set, I have 20 participants, uh, one to 20, who have answered five items, items one to five. And we're gonna calculate a total score and mean score for these five items. Uh, but right away, um, you should notice just through quick inspection of the data that there's actually missing data points. Not all 20 participants answered all five items. And this is going to be problematic because when we go to compute a total score or when we go to compute a mean score, uh, we're not going to get scores for individuals with missing values. Those total scores and mean scores are going to remain blank for those individuals. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to work around this, but let me quickly demonstrate it just to uh, so everyone could see it visually. So we're going to go to transform compute variable. We're going to use the traditional method of creating a total score, which is just adding up all items, items one, two, three, four, and five. We click OK. And we could see just as I was suggesting, unless individuals answered all five items, uh, a lot of individuals have a blank total score because they have missing data and with that missing data They are unable to be computed for a total score uh, Let's do the mean score as well the traditional method for mean just to further demonstrate this point So here I have it already highlighted I'm using the syntax this time But I'm gonna add up all five items divided by five to get the mean click uh, run and just like the total score, the mean score is demonstrating the same thing. If we follow these traditional approaches to the total score or mean score, we're not able to capture all individuals within the sample because they're not answering all five items. Uh, but perhaps you don't really care if they answer all five items because uh, perhaps that's not what you're looking for. You just want to get a general idea of what total scores and mean scores could be for each individual. As you can see, individuals do have data to provide. They just perhaps don't have all five items to watch the traditional methods are trying to capture. So uh, fortunately, there's an alternative method that could be used in order to capture a wider range of data amongst participants. Um, but in order to do this, you need to use the syntax in order to make these calculations. So here I have two examples, one on how to do a new total score and the other how to do a new mean score. So the difference here for the total score, for example, which I'm highlighting, instead of us adding all the items together to get a total score, we're going to place them through, place them through the function sum.3. Sum just means we're going to total the items, but dot three suggests they need to have at least three items answered, meaning three items with values in order for a total to be provided for that individual. So the items, the order of the items doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which items they answer. As long as they answer three out of the five, we'll give them a total score. So using this new approach, let's click run and see what it looks like. And here's our new total score. So our criteria was set out that as long as they answer three items, uh, they'll be captured with a total score. Uh, but you can see here, one of our based on our criteria, we still weren't able to capture one individual who was participant 13. The only answer two items and therefore we're not given a total score. We could always change the criteria to create the sum dot two, but perhaps you have reasons for why you want at least three items to be answered. So when you're able to identify someone who's answered less than three items, perhaps you might want to remove that individual from the data set. Uh, but let's continue with uh, the new alternative method for the mean. Here it is highlighted. Um, what's different from this approach to the traditional mean approach is that we're going to put all items through the mean function. So it's going to be mean dot three. And a similar approach is going to go on here. We're going to calculate the mean for each participant as long as three of the items are being answered. It doesn't matter which three items. It doesn't matter the order of the items that are answered, but we need at least three of the five items to be answered. So let's run this to see what it looks like. And of course, it will reflect uh, our new total score. So our new total score, our new mean score, 
are capturing a wider range of participants within the data because we've changed the criteria. Um, this is a nice and flexible method to get more information from your data as the more traditional approaches to computing the total score through the transform menu or computing the mean even through the transform menu leave you with a lot of missing data. And um, one of the worst things you could do is try to manually go through and calculate these values for these individuals, especially if you have a large data set. So if you use these alternative syntax, which I have written here in PowerPoint, um, you can actually change the criteria for the sum in total and hopefully capture more individuals. Um, at the same time, there is a caveat to this approach. This isn't a method that helps uh, dealing with missing data as there's different statistical procedures involved in that. But depending on what you want to do with your data and depending on what you're seeking to answer, these uh, alternative approaches can help you capture a wider range of uh, results within your data. Uh, thank you for watching.